Well, good morning, everyone. I'll do a little oil change and a little maintenance on the generator here. Get it ready for another summer's worth of work over at the New Hampshire cabin. I can't tell you how anxious I am to get that project started back up again, and I know a lot of my viewers are as well. As you can well imagine, people are asking me all the time about the equipment that I use, be it generators, chainsaws, hunting equipment, you name it. So I've decided to add a new series to my channel and I'll do occasional equipment reviews. Don't misinterpret that, however. Companies contact me all the time offering to send me free stuff. The Through Night Flashlight Company is one of them. You will never see me taking something out of the box, spending 10 minutes with it, and then recommending it to my viewers. That is not my intention here. All I will be doing is sharing my opinion and experience from stuff that I have used for a while. I will give you my honest opinion, both good and bad. When we're spending our hard-earned money on things, it's always good to get someone's opinion that has experience with that item. That is all I'm intending to do. For starters, I'm going to talk about the Champion Generator. I've had this one now since somewhere around 06. And I've bought two other Champion Generators since then. And I love every one of them. So let's get this review underway. I'm pretty certain that a lot of the viewers here today are fans of Honda generators. I am as well. Honda makes some great equipment. I bought a Honda generator way back in 1986. Served me well for a long time. When I was building the homestead here in 2006, I wanted to pick up a generator, something of around 3,500 watts. A Honda of that size was running around $1,800. I was on a budget and I needed to spread my money out. I started looking at different brands online, kept coming back to these champion generators. I decided to give it a go. This generator was on sale at the time for around 250 bucks, something like that. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little skeptical, but I figured if I get a few years out of it, so be it. It would be well worth it. That was in 2006 or 2007. Now it's 2017. This generator is still running strong. It's never failed to start. It's never failed me in any way. It's been a great investment for me. Now this one here is my first purchase. Like I mentioned, it's a 3500 watt. It suits my needs just fine. However, if I have a few tools running at one time, like for instance, if my compressor is running, I'm going to let it go through its cycle, shut down, and then I'll make my cuts with my chop saw. It would be too small for a construction crew that's got a lot of tools and compressors running at one time. But for my needs, it's been just fine. Now it's a pretty solid generator. It's got a really nice heavy cage on it here. Everything's easily accessible. The oil fill right there. You just need to have a long skinny funnel for it. On and off switch right there. The gas on and off. Choke. It'll run all day on a tank of gas depending on the load that you're putting on it. Now this generator here is basically the exact same as the yellow one. It's under the Cabela's label. They call it the Outdoorsman series. It's a nice pretty green like I like. So I picked this one up. Now I can keep a generator at each cabin, which is very convenient. I don't always want to run a generator of this size. If all I want to do is charge my battery bank or run a few computers or a few different things at one time. So I made an, another investment 
into a smaller inverter type generator and I stuck with the Champion label once again. Now this might be coming across as an infomercial where some guy's getting paid to endorse Champion generators. <laughs> I can assure you I'm not being paid by anyone to endorse anything. I'm just sharing my experiences from the purchases that I've made. I bought this generator. It has exceeded my expectations by far. So I bought another one so I don't have to haul them back and forth. And then I bought a smaller one that's been more portable and it's the inverter model. So I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth, show you the different ones, kind of give you an idea of what prompted me to make the purchases that I did. Now this one here, basically the same generator. However, I'm a little bit disappointed in some of the features here. Now I don't know that when they started producing them for the private label with the Cabela's name, if they started cutting corners, but I'll show you a few things that were a little bit of a turn off for me. Now what I mean by the quality just seemed to have gone downhill a bit. A couple of little things here. The gas on and off including the drain plug here they're just made out of plastic I would think in real cold weather that could get broken off very easily because it would become brittle the choke lever here when the engines running it'll vibrate itself back into the choke position I always have to have something to keep it where it belongs Oh, a few little things like the gas cap is made out of plastic there's just a lot more plastic on it than the older model you can tell a sign of the times there's always these little downgrades more and more things made out of plastic kind of a turn off for me the generator hasn't failed me at all it runs just fine but the little annoyance with the choke ah you know you know what i mean now they offer these generators with and without the wheel kit trust me when i say this invest a few extra bucks in the wheel kit I got this one with the wheels. Very glad I did. I'm going to add wheels to the other one. The generator dry weight is about 100 pounds. The wheel kit, piece of cake. Move that generator any way you want. Well worth it. This is the Champion 2000 watt inverter generator. I've had this one about a year and a half now, and again, I've had excellent results with it. Now, you're probably wondering what prompted me to buy even a third generator. I'll explain. No, I'm not collecting them. <laughs> For quite some time, I've had an interest in picking up a little portable suitcase-style generator. Honda makes a really nice one. They have a little 1,000-watt generator, but even that is 1000 bucks. I don't need to spend a thousand dollars for something of that caliber. I wanted a little portable generator that I could throw in the camper or to have at the cabin on a hot summer night if I want to run a fan or two all night long or if I just want to simply throw a charge on the battery bank. I don't need to be running an engine this big to do that. The bigger generators are a lot louder and they consume a lot more gas. Little generator is just what I wanted. So, Champion came up with this one. Since I had good luck with the other generators, I picked this up. Really glad I did. Again, like the other one, everything is handy right here. You're on and off for your gas, on and off for the engine, in your economy mode. So when you put this on, the engine will throttle down and it'll just putt, 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 putt away until you put a big load on it, and then it'll rev back up. It'll burn very little gas in the economy mode. One thing I really like about this one is it has an outlet specifically for charging a battery. It has the plug there. Just plug that in. Connect this to your battery. You can be charging your battery and then running some other tools at the same time. I love this. The small generator is an inverter generator. Those are quite a bit more money than the regular ones. 
That's a 2,000 watt inverter generator. I paid around $550 for it. And here the regular generator, the 4,000 watt, they're running around three to 350. But if you're running finicky electronics straight off of your generator, you definitely want to invest in the inverter models because they put out the power in a nice clean wave rather than the regular ones puts it out in pulses. I'll explain it the way that my friend Jack who lives off the grid in the Adirondacks has explained it to me and it makes a lot of sense. Picture that you're sending electricity across a pond. The regular one will send the electricity across the water like when the water is choppy and it's arriving on the other shore in pulses. That's very harmful to finicky, finicky electronics. The pure sine wave inverters will send it like when the pond is silent like a mirror and the electricity is arriving in one steady stream. It was a really good explanation and I regurgitate that quite often when I'm trying to explain it. So for power tools and all of that, this generator here is fantastic, but for running my computers and stuff like that, definitely going with the inverter generator. So what is it that I don't like about the generators? Well, in all honesty, I've got very little to complain about. The only gripe with this one here is occasionally when I go to shut the generator off, I'll find nuts and bolts on the ground beneath it. <laughs> it's even worse with the Cabela's one. It's pretty evident that someone in the factory doesn't care much about his job. Not a lot of pride there. He's putting on the nuts and bolts finger tight. So if you buy one, get your wrench out, tighten things down. Stuff has always fallen off of the Cabela's one. But aside from that little annoyance, it's been a real good investment. It was well worth the money. On this one here, the only gripe I have is the same gripe I have with a lot of the newer equipment these days, especially chainsaws, and they're covering everything up with plastic. If I'm working and the oil gets low and the machine shuts off, instead of me just grabbing my oil and accessing the filler cap, I've got to take these screws out and remove this panel to fill it back up with oil. It's not a big deal, but it's just an annoyance that's going to slow me down. So as you can see, I was pretty pleased with the purchase of my Champion generator. If I wasn't, I wouldn't have bought two more of them. These three generators combined, my total investment's been around $1,150. As opposed to the little 1,000 watt Honda one, which is running about a thousand bucks. It's up to you to decide which caliber of generator will suit your needs. These champion generators suit my needs just fine. I'm not going to bother taking up a bunch of time in this video to speak of the technical jargon, fuel capacities, that sort of thing. I'll put links to these generators in the description below. That way you can look them up, get all the specs, prices, that sort of thing. So I hope you enjoyed the video. You found it beneficial. If you did, leave me a comment below. So all the best to you. God bless.